Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Alan, and I'm going to give you a guided tour of the caves tonight. And to tonight is my 420th guided tour. Hey. Hey. So we shouldn't get lost. Um, has John told you what's happening tonight? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not not I'm, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of the caves. So we, when we go around the caves, I won't be saying, well, that's one lump of red rock and that's another lump of red rock. You'll be able to relate what was on the surface to what's still underground. Happy? Yep. Yeah. Right, let's put to bed a few myths about the caves first. There's rumours that they stretch up to Clifton <coughs> and over to Knoll. I'd love that to be true. But they're contained within a lump of red sandstone, this red rock here. And the sandstone goes just the other side of St Mary Red Cliff Church, just over the other side of the floating harbour, down to the Lloyds building, and about a quarter mile into Bedminster. And the rumour was there's between nine and twelve acres of caves. And I've done some recent research, and that's probably very true, because from the end of the caves here, there were two tunnels that went under Red Cliff Hill. One went to the crypts of the church, and the other one went under the burial ground. Any of you been to the Kiln restaurant behind St Mary Redcliffe Church? Any of you know of it? No. Oh dear. <laughs> behind St Mary Redcliffe Church there was the Hilton Hotel. I think it's changed its name about ten times. It's always changing its name. Then in the 1970s, at the very bottom end of Redcliffe Hill, uh, when they built the tower blocks, they also put a subway underneath the road, and that also cut into caves. So I well believe between nine and twelve acres of caves is very true. One other point of interest, that 400 feet beneath our feet are the tunnels from the Bedminster coal mines, from the Dean Lane pit, about a mile and a half away in that direction. So we've got caves on top of mines. But tonight you'll be seeing no caves at all. These were all dug out by man. Pick, shovel and wheelbarrow, probably between 1650 to 1750. They extracted the red sandstone, crushed it, mixed with minerals and made it into glass. Cheap brownie green bottle glass. Just keep telling yourself these are all man made. It's phenomenal effort. And what you'll be seeing tonight is about 5% of what was originally here. And they were. This, this is what it looked like. Is the Dean Lane pit still accessible? No, no, it's. Uh, do you know Dean Lane Park? Yeah. And there's a skateboard park yeah. there. Yeah. And up until about two years ago, there used to be a wooden bandstand there. Yeah. And that got burnt down. That was the pit head. That was exactly here. Oh, really? That's what right. it looked like in 1872. <laughs> you know, it's only 130 years ago, and a very important part of Bedminster's industrial coal mining history has been forgotten. So if you blew up the skate park, you might be able to find. Well, you, <laughs> you, you, you find a 400 foot yeah. deep shaft. <laughs> Probably 200 foot filled with water. Yeah. <laughs> and, and lots of horrible gases. Um, and this is the glass kiln I mentioned earlier, the one that they converted into the kiln restaurant. Um, and I got an investment here from the firm that took it over. The firm was called HT Proctor. And the investment said, in calling attention to their special manures. I have much pleasure in stating they will be found of superior quality and the most economical which are manufactured. Then it goes into paragraphs of all the different manures they made. Don't tell you that when you're in the restaurant, do they? <laughs> After the caves were dug out, they were put to other purposes uh, for storage and dumping. And we'll talk more about dumping towards the end of the tour. But they stored valuable goods, pottery, glassware, packing materials. And I also read elephant's tusks and palm oil. And I thought, here we go, another of Bristol's myths. I didn't believe it. But on the houses uh, above, at number two Redcliffe Parade West, in the year 1800, lived a guy called Thomas King. And he was an African merchant. He traded cheap, shoddy Bristol goods with Africa. It was second-hand clothes, tinware, ironware. To quote, everything was oddments and most shoddy. But the article didn't tell me what they brought back from Africa. But I was reading a Western Daily Press dated 1859, and it was talking about a boat that was moored on the next wharf round, Redcliffe Wharf. Exactly the same spot they first put the Matthew in the water. And the boat was called the Porto Novo, and she was on fire. And to put the fire out, they chopped the masts off, cut holes in the bottom, dragged it underwater. They put the fire out, and they told us what the cargo was. Uh, 230 tonnes of palm oil, 4 tonnes of barwood, 4,400 coconuts, and it said the smell of burning elephant's tusks was horrendous. So have elephant's tusks and palm oil stored in the caves. I like that story. <laughs> Time to go around the caves. 